uh, give credit to Michigan, did not win the football game. Um, also want to uh, say thank you. Obviously, it's been a tough week for me emotionally, but uh, had a lot of love and support in the Smith Center as well as in the community, and, and uh, uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, and with that, uh, you know, I know our guys came over here with a challenge to play a good football team. <laughs> Thought our guys answered the bell, rose up to the challenge. Uh, extremely frustrated with some of the uh, some of the situations that occurred, especially in the second half. So uh, we'll uh, double down, buckle up, um, have a good week of practice, and get ready to play against the Northwestern, a, a rivalry game that uh, means a lot here at the end. Coach, how are you, how are you feeling right now? I'm extremely pissed off, right? Like just very angry, um, very upset. I think our kids did a lot to win the football game and uh, continually have things to just go against us. Uh, very frustrating and you got to stand up for your people that you believe in and I believe in that locker room big time and I know they'll rise up to the challenge once again. Are there any one or two particular situations that are particularly infuriating for you? Yeah, I just, you know, very frustrated. Um, uh, I, I think I always look forward to film on Sunday as a coach, but, uh, you know, here as of late, uh, it's just um, keep getting answers I don't love, right? And, and, and it doesn't help us on, on things during the course of the week. So we, we uh, hopefully will play a cleaner game. Um, some penalties have really hurt us in these last three ball games, and uh, we we have to correct that internally. If we're doing things illegally, then we got to uh, correct that. But um, very very frustrated in the ending of that football game. Coach, you obviously sorry for the loss. Yeah. What's what's it been like the last 24 hours for you? You know, when I'm alone, it's it, it's it's tough. Or you know, it's just me and my wife. Uh, but uh, you know, I made the decision really during the day uh, Friday that, that this is something I was going to do. Um, uh, very emotional time, and I'm kind of still just on the high of the. Of the football game, um, but uh, have had you know just tremendous uh, support from my family uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, and then also from my family here at the University of Illinois, from our players. Uh, it, I've definitely felt the love all day. It's going to be a rough couple days. My uh, mom's uh, uh, visitation will be tomorrow, and her funeral will be on Monday. Um, and uh, I, th I think it was very apparent from our players how much they care uh, for each other, uh, for us as coaches. And, and today was a Really double and frustrating day because I don't think it needed to end this way. What does that tell you about your players? Or what did you learn about your players? You come in here, given a tough week, and yeah. the kind of game they didn't need to rally around. Yeah, I'm afraid to put them in here with you guys because I don't think they're going to handle questions well. Um, I think they're angry. I think they're frustrated. Um, I think we have to, as, as coaches, continue to, to guide them and put them through. Um, but you know, one of the things that we always talk about is we got to earn the things we get, right? And, and I think they earned an opportunity to get a victory today, and uh, unfortunately, fell a little bit short. We can. Definitely uh, uh, correct some mistakes and move forward, and uh, hopefully to be in this position again, we'll be able to come out on top. Brent, I know you're, sorry, I guess what did it mean for your team kind of have this response after the past two weeks? You know, I, I think from the outside world, maybe they didn't know if we would, but I was, I was fairly sure we were going to play extremely well. Um, uh, when I started watching the film on Sunday of last week, uh, I, I took a look at these guys during our bye week, uh, our second bye week, just because I wanted to get a look at them. We hadn't seen a lot of them on, on crossover games, so I felt it was going to be a good matchup. I liked the way our D-line matched up against our offensive line. I thought our offense was going to create some some issues for them. Um, you know, we did a lot of really good things, and in the end, uh, just fell a little bit short. Brent, I know there's no uh, moral victories or anything in football, but do you take a little bit from this game knowing that you went head-to-head -head with Michigan at their place? Uh, I get the question. Uh, no. Like, I think our guys came here to win. Uh, um, that's what we came here to do. Uh, I said last year at the end of the year, I didn't come here to win five games. Uh, I've been very open about that. I, I didn't come here to lose to Michigan. I came here to beat Michigan. Um, you know, and, and for us now, we got to uh, you know put this one, uh, learn from the moments, uh, players and coaches, uh, and, and uh, you know put ourselves in a position to win against Northwestern. What you think of Chase Brown when he gave you today and being able to kind of control? Chase the is a phenomenal, you know, a he's a phenomenal football player, but just the, his challenge this week was right to, to um, you know get healthy, and, and he lived in that training room. I give uh, our medical staff all the credit in the world, uh, J, uh, JB and, and the doctors, and uh, you know, but Chase, you know, I think probably. Uh, Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, he came in my office. Um, uh, it was definitely Tuesday because it was before my mom passed. And, and, and I remember he, he said, Coach, I'm playing Saturday. I don't know what everybody's making a big deal about, right? That's just kind of who he is. And, uh, you know, uh, wouldn't have put him in there, obviously, unless he was 100% ready to go. And I, uh, obviously, today he was more than ready to go. Mentioned your mom's or support you got after your mom's passing. Did somebody say something to you that kind of helped you get through it or maybe? Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of different scenarios. You know, <laughs> I just kept going to my phone, and there was more and more um, um, messages. Uh, former players. Uh, uh, you know, I, I told the TV crew there's one in particular. Uh, uh, I recruited a 
a walk-on uh, linebacker a number of years ago at the University of Iowa by the name of Dallas Clark, and, and um, uh, he ended up uh, being a pretty good tight end. But um, he said something to me in a text on on Friday. Uh, uh, he he had unfortunately as well lost his mother a little prematurely in life, and he said something to me to the effect that you know mothers are at their happiest when they watch their sons do what they love, right? And and um, I know my mom. My, she definitely knows I love to coach, so she's probably going to get at me for being mean right now, or mad, or angry. But um, I do know that I do know that she uh, she's she's probably smiling today in certain regards. Sorry, back to the yeah, game, but the, the defense that first drive they yeah. pretty effortlessly moved down. What yeah. changed? What, what, what did you see? If any well, we missed some tackles on that first drive for sure. Right, there was some some early on in the first quarter. I think everybody just ramped up a little bit, and we we, we missed some uncharacteristic play. Screen game hurt us a little bit again. We got to make sure we get that uh, corrected. And then we kind of started playing overly cautious uh, to the screen, screen game. Um, uh, you know, really there wasn't a lot of vertical passing game. They were just running a lot of pick routes, mess routes. Uh, we got to be able to play those a little bit better. Uh, but I think, you know, again, defensively, uh, Ryan and staff just did a nice job. But uh, especially in that second half, we thought, you know, we kind of controlled the run game. Um, uh, and then especially when, when the running back wasn't in there anymore, we thought we could do some things there. What's the key with that? We've seen that screen game kind of crop up a few times. What was the key to containing that a little bit more? Yeah, I think first to be aware of it. I know that that one that they hit backed up. Everybody's going screen on the sideline, just awareness of it. Um, uh, but sometimes if you know a guy's covering that back and he's in an inside leverage position, he can't get to it through traffic. That's an issue schematically, obviously. And then uh, we can do some different things at the line of scrimmage with either our overhang players, our, our DBs, or even you know with defensive linemen rushing the passer. You know, I don't even know what his numbers are. I just know he's very productive uh, in the run game, throw game, leadership. Um, you know, I, I made a, uh, I think it was a 32 play edit last night and uh, just really showed our guys how we would be able to do things against them today. I just, I think the game is always about matchups and I just like the way we matched up. I didn't think uh, they had seen an, a, a running back like Hick Chase in, in, in their season. I thought he'd be able to go out there and do some things and um, a lot of that played up. We just came up a little bit short in the end. Brent, what did you think of Casey Washington today? Making some big Casey's breaks? been really impressive the last month. I think he's playing his best football. Uh, excited where he can be and what he can do in the future. Uh, very strong receiver. I thought we caught the ball pretty well in, the, in, in, in considering the conditions. So uh, a lot of positives and, and things that we can build on for this week. Good thing to be playing your rival this next week after the that he had this way. Yeah. Um, I think anytime you're playing the Big Ten, uh, Northwestern is obviously an in-state rival that uh, it's a trophy game. You know, um, there's a lot to play for. Obviously, a, an eight-win team would be a, a really good sound uh, for uh, bowl game perspectives and all that goes into it. And then obviously today, how things play out, you never know what's going to happen uh, in the Big Ten West. So uh, a lot of things out there to play for, but I think our guys play for pride, right? And, and uh, I would guess that they're going to go out and prepare and play and have a lot of pride in their preparation for this week's game. Anything else? Talking about building culture and being there for kind of your players, what did it kind of mean for you to have them kind of get back to you and talk to you during kind of what? Yeah, it was. Uh, I told our coaches like it just blew me away. Um, the number of players that reached out to me, uh, you know, uh, immediately when it happened. Um, I couldn't go to practice Thursday. I was just too jacked up. I, I didn't. So uh, I know a lot of them um, text me or called or. Uh, I told them I would be in a meeting on Thursday night and, 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 and I told them that I didn't want to take away or distract them from their preparation because I knew they would prepare very well. So I was very upfront with them on Thursday night. I was with the 74 man travel roster like, hey, uh, I think I'm going to be in a position to do this, but don't you do anything except to worry about you, right? You've earned this moment, you've earned this opportunity. Um, and, and unfortunately today to fall just a little bit short uh, is very frustrating, um, but it does set, I think, a precedence and an understanding in that locker room that we can literally play with everybody in the country um, and, and and hopefully can take this and continue to grow. The growth where we are right now from where we were a year ago at this time is is, is astronomical, but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't take the feeling of what we're experiencing right now uh, any better.